Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well, and welcome to this community showdown. It's going to be the Tomb Kings led by Renegade Moose facing off against the Demons of Chaos who shall be helmed by alls in this community match of the ages. Now, as far as the Lords go, it's going to be Setra over for the Tomb Kings versus the dreaded Herald of Zinch. Now, the Herald of Zinch, I think, is the uh, solid pick here. Tomb Kings are pretty good at sniping big targets, so if you come in with someone like Bellacor or any of the big expensive Demon Princes, they're going to have Sepulchral Stalkers, who shop the Grapos, a fair amount of Spears, decent anti-large tech throughout the roster. I do really like the smaller Lord with the utility. So the Herald of Zinch is great for two reasons, and let's go ahead and break it down. Number one is that he has Pinkfire. Pinkfire is a very, very good anti-infantry tool. So if you're just spamming this the entire game on the Hecar Warriors, Tomb Guard Skeletons, it's going to be excellent for clearing those Skeletons off the battlefield and off points. On top of that, Tomb King's characters are generally weak to fire, so having the blue fire of Zinch to just spam at Tomb King's characters, like their casters, Arkin, Kotep, whatever, it's going to be pretty effective, right? Setra, on the other hand, is a little bit harder to snipe because he's got like 10,000 HP, he's got high armor, but even still, the blue fire is a nice utility piece to have. You could use it to snipe caskets, other things like that. So for the rest of the Demon's Army here, it is going to be Exalted Plague Bears backed up by the Blood Letters of Corn. Kind of a cool combo. The Exalted Plague Bears, of course, very tanky, and they hit reasonably hard too. Nurgle is, you know, obviously Corn is all about, you know, killing things quickly, but Nurgle hits really hard too. 52 weapon strength is no joke. So if these guys get in a sustained grind with any Tomb King's infantry, they should win. But again, they're very slow, they're lightly armored, so they're vulnerable to a number of things like archers and, uh, you know, expensive magic like Buna can certainly wear them down. But the Holy Hand Grenade is also a nice tech. If there's any Tomb King's monsters, you can use those, maybe Cytra, for example. Now, Blood Letters, I'm kind of curious about. Usually when you bring Blood Letters, you're paying for, uh, you're paying for the armor piercing, right? So in this situation, Tim King's infantry are usually pretty light in the armor department. So I don't know. I'm really curious about the blood letter tech here. They, of course, are still good at cutting through chaff. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see how they do against the Tomb King's troopers. I'm really going to be keeping an eye on their career with great interest. More Exalted Plague Bears, and it looks like in the back we do have a double Blood Reaper. So Blood Reapers are kind of cool. Fire damage, again, makes them a decent duelist against Tomb King's characters. They're a little bit tough to remove. Just kind of mix them in with your uh, Plague Bears and they're going to be doing their thing. I personally really, really like Demons of Chaos. I think they're a super fun faction. Uh, being able to kind of mix and match all these styles of the different gods is great. Like earlier today, for example, I played a game where I used the uh, Exalted Great Unclean One to be using the uh, Fleshy Abundance on the Hellforged Host, the Corn Demons, which were just getting so much value out of it. There's a lot of fun tech with them. A couple of blues as well to grab objectives. And for the forces here of the Renegade Moose, not just the Moose, but he is a Renegade. And he is out here with skeletons in the front, no surprises. Backline's going to be Eyes of the Desert. And the previous meta for the Demons of Chaos, at least in the last season, when they get, were getting quite a bit of play, was actually single entities. So it was using like Soul Grinders, uh, you know, Double Nurgle Soul Grinder with like a demon character. So clearly the Tomb Kings players teched against that a little bit. We do see the Eyes of the Desert as well as the Sphinx. And etc. is just a nice tool here. Pretty good at clearing out most of the infantry and in general is, is good against large targets too. Cetra does have good enough stats to not rely on that bonus for his infantry. A couple skeleton spears in the bushes. I wonder if we're going to be seeing the early, early pink fire action. Um, no, it looks like it's just shooting on its disc and it's going to be juking in the trees. So good micro here from our Zinch player. Looks like Alls is going to be dodging most of those shots as the dreaded eyes of the desert lurk in the bushes looking to get some uh, value there. And here comes a blue fire. Now blue fire is actually quite good down the line as well. So you can use it on a side profile. Granted, I think a really well cast pink fire would have actually done more damage there against those skeleton spearmen. Whereas the application of the down the line blue that you just saw is better against like elite troops because um, it has better armor piercing. So Harold's going to be pulling back here. We do see objective one going to be opening up here in just a moment. And on the far side, we do see some dreaded Nurglings rolling. They're blasting some limp biscuit out of their tiny little Nurgling speakers. I love the Nurgling golem. Like when they, they make the golem, you see like the ones that are like fused together, like the uh, Power Rangers. Yeah, it's pretty great. But they're going to get plowed over by these horsemen. Uh, although not basic skeleton horsemen. It's a bit of a close fight. Nurglings might actually be able to win that. But if they do bring, yeah, any more support, we see chariots. Uh, Demons of Chaos could respond to the mass, I'm about to say, with flesh hounds or uh, toads to get some mass to stop those horsemen. But overall, the demons are probably going to get their clutches on objective number three right out of the gates as the Tomb Kings are getting turbo aggressive. And there you see the Pink Fire. Pink Fire doing a ton of work. And one unit of uh, Skeleton Spears, the RR, which costs 550 gold, is immediately melted down to the Shadow Realm. So very, very cost effective stuff there for our old uh, demon friends. Now, Demon's just chilling out, and really, if you're able to control the far side objective, the one advantage is it's going to put the aggressive initiative on your opponent. They're going to have to move forward. They're going to have to make the plays. You can kind of just chill back and play very defensively. You know, line up this big ambush in the bushes here with these Plague Bears. I'm quite curious what they're going to be doing. Locus of Conjuration going down as well. And it looks like there's going to be another Blue Fire. So Blue Fire on top of the Sepulchral Soccer is pretty cost-effective. It might actually kill a model. Doesn't look like it got a kill there, but it did do some okay damage. So up on the high ground, 
Couple skeletons moving in, a little uh, popcorn bandits of Zinch gonna be pulling back, letting them crumble a little bit more before the big fighting starts. Another really, really nice pink fire right there. That spell is great. And honestly, I think Zinch has some weird applications against Tomb Kings just because of that spell. It's very good to just spam and clear things out. And then you get the Zinch army abilities, which are also quite good. I believe the Zinch army ability does fire damage too, from the uh, second one for sniping the lords and whatnot. But this is actually a nice play by Renegade Moose as well, getting up to the objective and denying the demons the cap. So gonna be slowing their roll a little bit. And Setra, of course, is gonna be excellent against all these elite infantry. I mean, that's pretty much what Cetra on the Sphinx was born and bred to do. I just wish Cetra on the Chariot was a little bit more viable. And you do see the Tomb King's assets that were sent over to Objective 3 moving on over to Objective 1 now. So Tomb Kings are going to be playing what I like to call like a lane focus strategy on maps like this, where you can just push one lane, put all your resources into it, and uh, cackle all the way to the bank. So good Chariot play. Really, really nice getting into Blood Letters. And Tomb King's Chariots don't have good armor piercing, but Demons don't really have armor outside of a couple uh, weird nuances. So that chariot did a ton of damage against the blood letters and it's going to keep rolling rolling but it might get caught here and we'll have to see there are some uh, blood reapers in there another nice pink fire going down to those skeleton spears clearing the objective but the demons have not been able to get this one calling nurglings from the vanguard so we've seen a couple vanguard nurglings roll up blue should be able to finish off these skeletons going to take a little bit of time now the other elite infantry have moved out of the bushes so it looks like the demons are they going to be pushing objective two no it looks like the plague bears are coming back to try and secure this point and yeah plague bears are going to be very very tough to finish they are uh, a raid boss of a unit granted this demons of chaos army isn't using any sort of healing so great unclean one of course can bring that and herald of nurgle but that's not what we're going to be seeing Couple Screamers go for the kill, etc. Definitely a little bit of a misplay here, probably, um, considering the Sphinx is here, a lot of Horsemen support. Uh, you're going to be losing 700 gold worth of Demons here, so they're going to be crumbling very quickly and pretty much accomplishing nothing. But the one big advantage that I can kind of see for the Demons of Chaos right now is their infantry. Um, it seems like most of them are in pretty good shape. We see the Blood Letters going here, the Plague Bearers are in good shape, and they're all going to be bumping and grinding, which will give them the capture weight advantage. Uh, and on the far side, we see Nurglings chilling here. Yeah, just kind of waiting. I like the patience with the Flesh Hounds too, because, you know, the big thing about the lane pushing playstyle like this, on, you know, there's a couple maps like Black Ark is similar in a much more bigger regard, but what you like to do if you're the one pushing the lane. So let's say if we're coming from the Tomb King's perspective, is you push the lane and then your opponent's going to bring their assets they, that they have on their far side objective. And then you can then ambush that. It's kind of like the whole gimmick of that playstyle here. Looks like uh, Ushafti's someone going to be going down to the Plague Bearers as the Unholy Hand Grenades are thrown, etc. And the Sphinx, both of whom have taken a little bit of damage. Nothing too serious, but the Ushafti summon will be okay here. Uh, Exalted Plague Bearers don't have the best AP. Ushafti themselves have 90 armor and are reasonably good against infantry units. So we do see the uh, the old Blood Reaper down here getting bullied by Cetra. He's a foot-based character and uh, Cetra is quite a strong fighter. Any buffs? Yeah, the Blessed Blade of Petra, really good. Not only is that going to be buffing Cetra's stats, but it's going to be giving a magic damage, which is basically just another 20% damage against demons. As we do see the Blood Reapers here getting karate chopped by the Imperishable One. Uh, this Blood Reaper has got to be getting a little bit danger low. Yeah, he's hitting at a relatively low amount of HP. Here, Exalted Plague Bears do get hit with Usirian's Incantation of Vengeance. Not bad. Magic damage, and uh, it's kind of like a mini, mini Buno effect. I mean, it's it's not quite as good, but it does slow their speed, and, uh, you know, it does its thing. I think it's cheaper also, so got to take that into account. Demons holding on to the back point. Looks like they were able to get it. The little Nurglings and the Exalted Plague Bears back here should be able to fight off in tandem with the Chromatic Abominations. Ushapti summon, putting a bit of a dent in these units, but shouldn't be anything too devastating. And now we see the second wave of Tomb King's units coming out. It's going to be Nehekar Warriors, which are solid. You know, it's infantry armor piercing. They certainly check all the boxes of things that you're going to want against these lightning armor demon infantry, except magic damage, of course, but they try their best. You know, we got to give them a break here. So demons got a little bit crazy again. More of these uh, hounds, as well as these screamers of Zinch diving into the backfield, and they did get a ton of damage on Cetra in tandem with what appears to be firepower from the Herald of Zinch blasting at that bad boy. And a couple Seekers come again. Seekers were always the one unit on the Demons of Chaos roster. I felt that if the Hellstriders weren't OP, you know, Slonash would just be spamming out Seekers. They're incredibly good. 100 speed, good armor piercing, good damage. Glass cannons, of course, but that's how Slonash should play. I, you know, reward the high micro, reward the good engagements, but don't just be ubiquitously good in every situation like Hellstriders used to be, which was just so dumb. I'm, I'm glad we're past that. It's, uh, it feels like ancient history now. Regardless, the battle rage is on. Looking at the value, guys, it's dead even. Um, both sides? Do they have a healing on both sides? Not really. So Tomb Kings are probably a little bit ahead on value. Cetra and his Sphinx in relatively okay shape. Let's see where that blue fire is going to be going. It looks like it's just going for the Cetra snipe. So yeah, this is going to be the new focus for the Demons of Chaos, trying to take down Cetra. But Cetra is going to be settling an old score here with this uh, Blood Letter who is dueling earlier. And uh, the Blood Letter probably will be crumbling very soon. One or two more attacks from Cetra are going to be tanking. Oh, and the Sphinx getting in there as well. It's pretty rare that the Sphinx has hit their target. But that Blood Letter just, or Blood Reaper, just got KO'd by the Tomb King's character squad. Now... Back objective, firmly controlled by the demons. Tomb King stabilizing here a little bit, getting some really nice picks on the characters. 
one Blood Reaper is still in pretty good shape. And like I said, the infantry is the advantage that the Demons of Chaos have. Um, if you're looking at the Tomb Kings, their infantry are losing most of the fights. We see Plague Bear is still very functional, Chromatic Abominations, Festering Stooges still going strong, and more Blood Letters are going to be coming out. Could that be an issue? Like maybe the Tomb Kings are going to get good value against these single entities like the Blood Reapers and the characters. But are they going to be struggling to deal with the infantry as the game progresses? Chromatic Abominations and Festering Stooges putting some firepower into the eyes of the desert. Uh, they're sitting at 28 leadership, so relatively stable right now. We will have to see how that goes. On the side objective, we do see the Tomb Kings getting a little bit crunk. Yes, Chariots move it in. I love seeing Tomb Kings Chariots. It's very flavorful as they move through the little popcorn bandits. Uh, Nurglings do take about 20% of their HP on that charge. Chariot's going to be rinsing for round two, getting ready to charge as more warriors and spears come on in. And uh, Flesh Hound's a great counter here. Flesh Hound's going to be very good against chariots. Chariots are obviously terrible against mass, unless you're the OP Chaos Dwarves, and then you have these demon chariots that literally kill giants. But yeah, fun stuff indeed. Skeleton chariots on the run, fleeing the scene. We do see the little Nurgling bandits, as well as the Flesh Hounds of Corn. Trying to hunt them down, but the chariots, I believe, do have a decent amount of armor at 80, so they should be able to escape. But demons do manage to hold on to the objective, and their points are creeping up on a thousand. So we'll have to keep tabs as this game does uh, carry on. Chromatic Abominations, shooting at Cetro. Cetro sitting at 4,000 HP, so he's hanging in there pretty well. It's the big monster, the Sphinx, even though it's anti large, so we'll do some okay damage against these guys. Demons of Chaos calling in. What are their better anti large choices? As far as anti large, as Demons of Chaos, you, have, you obviously have your big Demon Lords, right? You can They can do well against large targets. Screamers are there. Uh, you can use some of the Nurgle single entities, but yeah, Screamers are going to be your premier anti-large unit as it looks like they're going to be hunting down Cetra. You better be careful. Demons of Chaos getting that good bump and grind in there as the Blood Letters obviously are going to be outcast, uh, outclassing these Nahakar Warriors. And the Festering Stooge is still sitting at a relatively uh, solid amount of HP. And are the Screamers going to be committing to the Cetra dive? They definitely shouldn't. Really good play by Renegade Moose, pulling back to the Spears. Cetra could probably just stand right on top of the Spears and chill out. Looks like there's going to be Unu Syrians going down there. I don't know what kind of damage that's going to be doing against something like Screamers, but maybe we'll be discovering some forbidden tech. I feel like it's barely going to get through the shields, although eh, it still has a bit of a duration, so going to be keeping tabs on that one. On the far side, Demon's trying to hold on to the point, and uh, both sides going to be committing resources. We do see Nehekaro Horsemen coming out, but they do lose to Flesh Hounds. Flesh Hounds are very, very solid against these type of light cavalry units. Nurglings going to be losing to the Warriors here, but I think the double Flesh Hound in tandem with any more demonic reinforcements should be able to win it out. We'll have to see. Harold of Zinch, he's actually getting his uh, little Muppet paws dirty down here as he does dive in there and fight. He totally looks like one of those like animatronics characters from like an 80s like power, like dark fantasy movie, right? Harold of Zinch fighting, and it looks like the Seeker's gonna win. Seekers have been kind of cleaning up. 69 kills, the blessed number of Slanesh, man. Look at that. I feel like I felt like I like I wasn't seeing it as much, but yeah, it's it's coming back to us. Nice wrestle here from the Tomb Kings. And the one thing that's gonna be the big differentiating factor against the flesh hounds is going to be the skeleton spearmen. Skeleton spearmen, of course, are anti-large, and they're gonna be able to munch down the flesh hounds and sustain combat. Especially, you know, 160 models. That's pretty nuts. And yeah, more flesh hounds on the way out. Looks like the objective is gonna be flipping. Uh, at this point, the Tomb Kings would win on two objectives. So if they manage to flip the side objective and the Demons of Chaos don't have enough steam, then, uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a problem for him. As the Zinch Herald moves over, maybe going to be getting some uh, magic. I don't know. He used a... We saw so many blues and so many pink fires earlier. I, I seriously doubt the Zinch character has a lot of magic left. Uh, looks like there is one pink fire there, which does hit the Nehekar Warriors. Definitely should have gone after the Skeleton Spears to allow the Flesh Hounds to just pretty much take everything else out. The Screamers and Flesh Hounds doing okay, but the Spear support here really, really is the big problem. They're in Critical Binding, though, and oh, these are the ROR Flesh Hounds. Yeah, it's cool to see those. The Hounds of the Blood Hunt, they uh, do apply some sort of uh, magic dampening, which is kind of cool. But King Nikesh's Scorpion Legion, an absolutely great choice. What the Demons of Chaos really need here are, are some good infantry. And, you know, speak of, uh, speak of quite literally the Warhammer Devil, and he shall arrive. Blood Letters of Corn are going to be on their way out, and, uh, yeah, they'll butcher these Skeleton Troopers. Like, probably one Blood Letter could take, like, you know, three or four Skeleton Spear units if you just kind of, like, put them one after another, so... Nurglings on the way to provide a little bit of capture weight. The side point's going to be heavily contested here. We see the Tomb Kings eclipsing the gap, and on this side, both uh, both of the armies are going to be colliding. So we get the Nurglings and Festering Stooges, Bloodletters, and more Nurglings battling against the two big characters. So Cetra the Imperishable and the Sphinx going to be making a play. And in the fourth quarter of the game, we do see a nice pick. I really like Screamer Catapults. I think seeing them earlier would have been pretty big. Uh, Demons of Chaos do have some ways of diving artillery, but Tomb Kings are an excellent faction at defending artillery because of how effective Nehekar Horsemen are at killing skirmishers. So Screaming Meme Catapults are awesome here because Demons obviously don't want to be losing leadership. Uh, if their leadership goes down, they crumble super quickly. And on top of that, it does magic damage. So it's going to be an excellent tool at clearing out these troopers. So there's certainly a good chance here that Cetra and his homeboy, the big Sphinx here, might be able to wrestle this objective. We'll see, but the Blood Letter's trading well and the low quality Tomb Kings infantry, and I do mean it. 300 gold skeleton warriors looking to be in a little bit of danger. 
So over on the side point, Tomb Kings do wrestle this one, but the Blood Letters are about to arrive. Sepulchral Stalkers coming in to support the Chariots. Sepulchral Stalkers have a little bit of ammo too, so the Tomb Kings player is going to have to ju uh, juke and dodge and make sure to do what he can to avoid it. As the Herald of Zinch does dodge back and forth here, he does get reserves from Chromatic Tomb, so I guess in a way you could you know, get a little bit of uh, wins in the late game here. Very, very close fight on this objective. They, you can see the uh, capture weight is back and forth for sure. And back towards objective one. Are the Demons of Chaos going to be getting triple caps? Very, very scrappy game here. More Nehekar Warriors being called in. Screaming Meme Catapults putting a little bit of fire firepower downtown. As the Festering Stew just getting hit by the Catapults. And Setra the Imperishable. Uh, not Setra, but no, the other Sphinx in a bit of a blob fight. Screamers of Niche going to get some good value here for sure. You're going to see the HP of this thing dropping. 100 HP goes there. Another 100 HP right there. So yeah, it's certainly drop, dropping down and is not going to want too much of that fight right there. Yeah, Demons seem to be covering, struggling to cover ground. We see a big value difference right now as Renegade Moose is up by quite a bit. 13.2 against 11.4. Looks like the Tomb Kings are slowly starting to take over this game. It's been a really, really good scrap, but you have to remember Tomb Kings do have a fair amount of healing. With the Lord of Nagakara, every time Cetra is casting a spell, he's healing his entire army. And they also have the army healing ability, the Realm of Souls. So yeah, Tomb Kings, you know, do have a lot of healing, and it's one of the reasons why they're so good at these like grindy type fights, right? Chariot's getting broken down here. Nurglings, little popcorn bandits getting through these bad boys. Blood letters being effective as is expected. The Nehakar Warriors with the blessed number of 69 continuing to put some damage on the uh, blood letters. So Slanesh is with them today. But yeah, it seems like the demons are just kind of running out of uh, real estate. They just don't have enough to kind of cover all their bases. Although some Seekers coming in is a really nice addition. Seekers getting a charge on unprepared Nehakar Horsemen. It's going to lead to their crumbling. And uh, as we do know, crumbling does a little bit more damage than it used to. What is that demon army ability? It looks like that was a tier 2 Zinch army ability. Definitely should have been used on Cetra uh, as it's a single target damage ability. But even still, it gets a little bit of work done and the Demons of Chaos do manage to hold on to the objective. Over here, looking at this one, demons are still grinding. Blood Letters are here. Tomb King's responding quite well with Skeleton Horsemen and uh, various other mobile pieces as the Herald of Zinch jukes back and forth and back and forth. Certainly on the highway to the danger zone. Blasting some Kenny Loggins out of his headset there. And... Uh, yeah, 34 leadership, Sepulchral Shockers moving up, Blood Letters, are they going to be able to carry this? Hard to say. I think the Demons pretty much have to bank on what they have here to get this objective back, because they're about to be eclipsed by the Demons of Chaos in terms of scoring. And the Seekers of Slanesh going to be pulling back, not wanting to get embroiled in combat versus the Big Sphinx here, right? Anti-Large, pretty strong, magic damage against Demons, what's not to love. And the uh, Seekers of Slanesh are pretty glass cannon for sure. They're not going to be wanting to get caught in sustained combat. Nurglings being called in, desperation stuff. Nurglings are, of course, very good at, uh, you know, rolling up on points, and they're surprisingly durable. They have good HP for their cost, and when they do get in combat, they get the Cloud of Flies, which gives them 9 melee defense. So, yeah, Nurglings, for what they are, are pretty great. You know, I, definitely a fun unit. I, I don't know. They had a bug in the previous patch where they didn't really do effective damage, but I don't know if CA fixed that. Hopefully they did. Seekers of Slanesh charging in. Big clash against the Nehakar Warriors with a nice flank coming in from Alls with the Seekers. The Seekers get in there, and those horsemen are going to get melted. Seekers, though, take a little bit of damage themselves, not being the tankiest, and we do see the Big Sphinx moving over there to try and stop this. Nurglings grinding against these chaff units, and man, oh man, this is a really, really scrappy game. Like, a moment ago, I thought it was over, but I'm like, wait a second, are the Demons of Chaos going to be able to find a way back into this? Kind of a, a little bit of a shady situation, right? It looks like the Demon Lord is still going, too. This little Herald of Zinch, man, he didn't hear no bell, sitting at 1,800 value, going strong. Demons holding on to this. See the horsemen getting crumbled down, so the Seekers of Slanesh should get 29 leadership, should be okay. Festering Stooge is showing why they're one of the best units in the game. They're super, super good. Um, 1,700 value. They regenerate models, too. That's what's really crazy about them. The Festering Gate, so not only does it heal the models up to maximum, but it resurrects dead models. It's crazy, crazy good. As more flesh hounds are being called in, and this is one of the dangers of, you know, pressing deep into your opponent's territory, right? They're going to be getting the faster reinforcements for the push and pull. Blue fire going down there, not bad. They're able to tickle the pickle on the chariots, and the old uh, Seekers are sent out to intercept the skeleton chariots to try and stop them. And the demons managed to hold on to this one. On the far side, looks like the demons of chaos grinding this one down, and the Tomb Kings might actually get flipped here. A couple warriors not in the best shape. King Nikesh's Scorpion Legion and Skeleton Horsemen still fighting pretty strong. But the Nurglings arriving and the Spearmen getting crumbled down is going to be the catalyst of change here. And, uh, you know, the changer is all about that. So this one's going to be flipping to the demons of chaos, which is pretty hog wild to say the least. Honestly, man, I thought this game was over like a couple minutes ago, but man, the scrappiness coming in here is very, very impressive. Flesh Hounds of Corn and Nurglings battling it out. Cetra and the Sphinx just, they're like, why won't you die? Why won't you go? And they're just, the demons are just not letting go of this objective. Now, what are we going to see coming in? Blood Letters of Corn. I'm really interested to see the value on some of these. Only 300 in their first life, but, you know, they, they got time to impress the Blood God, that's for sure. Catapult, how's it doing? 500. It's been able to help crumble some of the demon units. And is the Herald of Zinch going to move in there? Definitely not. Uh, you want to keep the Herald of Zinch alive, because if it does die, it's going to be a big leadership penalty. And demons, you know, you don't want them to be crumbling. They go down really, really quick once they start crumbling. 
So Capway still for the demons. We got Nurglings and Flesh Hounds here. Looks like some Skeleton Spears going to be arriving up on the objective. And guys, this is getting razor, razor close. His back objective being held. Demons of Chaos are creeping up here as the Tomb Kings make a little bit of a play here. But I think the Blood Letters and Nurglings might be able to win the 2v1. So Tomb Kings are pretty much all in on their lane push strategy. And now some of the reinforcements from the far side, the Hounds of the Blood Hunt, as well as basic Flesh Hounds, going to be coming in to try and reinforce. But if the Tomb Kings manage to flip this one, that could be the change of the uh, of the score here. Man, this is so close. Look at this one. Demons of Chaos barely holding on. Flesh Hounds screaming across. Blood Letters do arrive. But the capture weight seems to be favoring ye old Tomb Kings. Man, what scrappiness from Renegade Moose as well. The moose doesn't hear no bell. He moves in. It's actually the Imperishable trying to flip it. Oh my god, and the Flesh Hounds arrive. Is that going to be enough? Another Flesh Hound unit's going to be coming in. I think that might flip the cap weight, but the Tomb Kings do get it. Man, what a crazy, crazy turn of events here. As now we get more Demonic Infantry up, coming up here. It's going to be Blues currently looking at the score. We do see Alls is up by a little bit, but the, two, the Demons would have to capture this back very, very quickly here. Like super, super fast. Look at that. This is desperation mode. The Herald of Zinch getting in and he gets popped by that Sphinx right there, taking a lot of damage. And now he's going to be going into the trash can. Immediately, Cetra sees the demon and is going in for the kill. But the Demons of Chaos are going to be flipping this one, ladies and gentlemen, as more and more Blood Letters are on their way in. I think they're going to get enough cap weight. And also the skeletons are diminishing very, very quickly. But the Lord has fallen. Far side objective. Nothing to really see over there. We don't need to worry too much. Tomb King's Trooper is taking their sweet time. Demons, are they going to be able to flip it in time? Is the question. Blue sitting on the back objective. Blood Letters being very, very good at what they do which is killing infantry units you can see the skeleton spears are crumbling here flesh hounds of corn tying down cetera and uh blood letters just trying to get up really nice play by renegade moose using his chariots to kind of intercept them and keep them from getting to the point point. and it looks like the tomb kings do manage to get some reinforcements up so i was wrong the demons are not going to flip this one in time it looks like the tomb kings might just barely barely pull this game man this is like a razor close battle Blood Letters moving up, battling against Nahakara Warriors. More demons on the way in the back. Nurglings do arrive, but I think the Tomb Kings have clinched it. I think they're going to get it. The far side objective is being held by the demons, but the home objective not looking so hot right now, ladies and gentlemen. Four yield demons of chaos and the Renegade Moose getting in there. And it uh, looks like he's going to be securing the point. This is just going so back and forth. You can see the little Nurglings coming over, and that is going to be a tap out. That's going to be a Tomb Kings victory. GG, well played, man. You know, Tomb Kings are a top tier meta faction and Demons of Chaos are still being explored. The fact that Alls made that that close of a game shows that they certainly have some potential because both players are very strong tournament players. Um, so that was really, really fun. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one as much as me. Little Zinchcaster did great. Blood Reapers? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. They got. I felt like they kind of got countered by Setra pretty hard. Um, if it had been more of a typical Tomb Kings build, which was like probably using like a cheap caster with a wider army, they could have been a pretty good grinding tool for sure. Exalted Plague Bear is doing good as usual. Blood Letters? Interesting. I don't know if I'm sold on the Blood Letters in this matchup, but uh, yeah, I guess they're a fast inf killy infantry unit, which, you know, you don't have like Forsaken here, so maybe that's what you need to do. Seekers are great. Flesh Hounds are usually pretty good, and uh, obviously the uh, the Screamers, when they can get in their large targets, do well. Chromatic Abominations with 1,800. Jeez. GG, well played. Cetra with the carry, killing a lot of characters. Big Sphinx with 2,800 value as well. Just Despite the demons not really having a lot of big targets, man, the big Tomb King's monsters did really, really well. Crazy stuff. GG, well played. See you guys on the other side, and that's going to be it for tonight.